Hello, Professor Toybox here, along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and that means it's time for our next episode of Toybox Tutorials. Last time we finished my Fantasia toy box, but there are still a lot of toys we haven't covered yet. And as I was thinking about what I should do next, I remembered that I've had a lot of different requests over the past six months or so about toy box races. Some people have had questions about various racing toys, Others wanted me to build a racetrack in some style or another, but that got me thinking that I haven't done much with toy box races yet, so that's what I've decided to do next. I'm going to spend three weeks covering the basic racing toys, and I'm going to teach you how to use them to build a simple but fun car race in your toy box. Then, I'm going to put my toy box tutorial series on the shelf for a few months, and I'm going to start a brand new series that will air on Fridays. And in that series, I'm going to show you how to take your toy box races to the next level. I've been experimenting with the racing toys, and I've been able to figure out how the Disney Infinity developers did some of the things they did in the toy box speedway courses. I'm going to show you what I've learned, and we're going to use those tricks and techniques to build a deluxe racetrack that will rival any of the courses in toy box speedway. So that's the plan for my Friday videos for the first three to four months of 2021. Be sure to stick around because I think you're going to enjoy it. But for today, let's start with the basics. If you're new to the toy box, a car race is one of the easiest things to build. You don't need to know any logic, and it's a great way to get started in the toy box mode. The easiest way to build a racetrack is from the main menu. So we select Toy Box, and then we select New, and you can select New Race Track Toy Box. This option automatically constructs a racetrack along with some simple terrain underneath the track pieces. When it's done building, the track is all ready for you to race. All you need to do is supply the vehicles and add any decorations you want to customize the toy box. And while the track may not be exactly what you want, it's a great starting point. You can cut out the parts you don't like and replace them with your own track features. But suppose you have your own racetrack design in mind. How do you build it? Well, for that, we'll start at the main menu again, and we'll do a new toy box, and we'll do a new empty toy box. And as I've said before, this allows you to create a toy box world from scratch. Once the empty toy box world loads, open up the editor and go to the racetrack pieces drawer. This drawer contains various racetrack pieces that you can use to build roads in your toy box. <clears throat> to create a race, you start with the racetrack start piece. And there are actually two of these to choose from. If you scroll to the right, you've got the narrow set of racetrack roads. And then you come to the other part of the drawer and you have a section of uh, a set of wide racetrack pieces. So you can build a narrow racetrack or a wide racetrack. And you can also mix these two sets of racetrack pieces, as I'll show you in a minute. But let's start with the racetrack start piece. And by default, I'm facing this way in my toy box. And so I'm going to spin around 180 degrees. And I'm going to start back here in this back corner. We're going to build a racetrack. It's going to be the Briar Ridge Speedway. And because I'll be changing the sky next time, uh, that's why I'm building in this direction. So let me go ahead and put this down. All right, so this piece, as well as the narrower one near the start of the drawer, allows you to turn your toy box road into a racetrack. And it contains all of the logic you need for the race, and you don't have to do anything except place it in your world. And if we come into spark mode, and we look at the menu in the lower right, you'll notice there's no logic menu for this. So it's all self-contained, um, there's nothing you need to do with this toy except connect racetrack pieces to it and build your course. And uh, if we come in and grab the wide, the long wide track, you'll notice there's connectors on the end of these pieces, very similar to what we saw with the rail slides. And so as you bump these up next to each other, you'll notice the little icon is animated there and it shows it connecting. And so when you click that, then uh, the pieces uh, overlap and lock in place. And that's how you build your track. 
So I'm going to go ahead and connect a few of these together. And I'm going to put another one of these down over here. And then, as I said, you can actually uh, combine these with the smaller racetrack pieces. So if I scroll back over to the left, we're going to come to this racetrack split piece. And you'll notice there are three connectors on the right edge of this. The middle connector allows you to connect to wide pieces, like this one, and the smaller ones on either end, the other connectors on either end, allow you to connect to smaller, narrower racetrack pieces. So you can connect either by the middle or by those ends. And so I'm going to connect that. And just because all three aren't connected doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's either the one in the middle or the two on the outside edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a curve in here. Like that. And I'm going to lay down some track and build a simple course. And I don't want this thing to be too big, but uh, it needs to be big enough. So I'm going to put uh, a piece down here big enough to be interesting. And I'm going to put a long racetrack in here, and you'll see why in a few minutes. And then we'll come back to this one. And I'm going to put down three of these. Two, three, like that. And then we'll do another long, like this. And then I'm going to put in two of these short ones. And I'm doing this because I've already kind of laid out <laughs> how I want my racetrack course to go here. And so I'm building it off of a drawing that I have from what I built previously uh, before I started the video. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Now before we go too much further, I want to come back over here. We're going to come back to these wide pieces. And I'm going to put another one of these long ones down, like this. And then we're going to do another split piece, like that. And we'll combine this that way. I'm going to kind of build this from the other direction, and the two sections are going to meet when we're done. Okay, and then we need a few straight pieces here. So we're going to pick up the medium piece. I'm going to put that one in there like that. And then we're going to do a very long piece, like this, followed by another curve. And I could have just built this on the fly, but I thought it would be good to have a plan, <laughs> just to make sure I don't waste your time. Okay, and then... Another short piece, and I could just build this offline, but again, I know some of you like to follow along with what I'm doing and build these things for yourself, and that's why I'm taking my time to do this. All right, now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and drop down to... Uh, I think that's not going to work there, but so I'm going to come back over here. This part I'm actually going to change in a little bit, but for right now I'm putting this down just to connect the track up. There we are. And now that tells me how big a piece I need to complete this. And that one will do it. Okay, so now I have a complete racetrack. And at this point, I could leave the track like this um, with the racetrack floating in space. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that, but it'll be quite challenging to race because if you drive off the track, you're going to plummet to your death. And personally, if I'm building a ground-based toy box world, I like to anchor my terrain to the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up 
Right, I can't really pick that piece up because it's my only terrain piece. So I'll come back down to the terrain drawer. And of course it reset my drawer on me here. But I gotta scroll to the right to get to this large terrain block. This is the same size and shape as the one we started with. And some of you will be happy to know that I figured out the trick <laughs> that you've been trying to tell me about. I finally figured out how to make that work. So you place the piece and then you flick the joystick and it jumps. I finally got that to work. It's not totally reliable. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. That time it didn't. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and put down some terrain around here underneath the track and then I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I've got terrain down now underneath all of my racetrack. And again, I like that personally because I don't drive very well. <laughs> so a racetrack floating in midair is very difficult for me. Um, if I miss the track a little bit, I'm not going to plummet to my death, so I like that. But of course if you're building a racetrack in outer space or under the sea, or you're connecting a bunch of floating islands, then it makes sense to have a racetrack floating in midair. But now that we've got the racetrack built, and all we need is a vehicle to drive in order to play it. So I'm going to come to the ground vehicles drawer and I'm going to talk about vehicles in a future video but for right now I'll just place one in my toy box and exit the editor. And now if we've placed everything properly we should be able to hop in our car and drive onto the racetrack start piece and that orange marker appears for the race challenge and if we drive onto it we get the race menu and we can open that up and I'll go ahead and cancel out of that for now and we'll, whoops <laughs> back up and hop out of the car and just to show you what happens if the racetrack isn't aligned properly let's go ahead and move this curved piece over here and I'm going to slide it over just a little bit so you can see now we have a gap in the road. And so now when we come over to our car and we hop in the car and drive on to the racetrack start piece, that menu does not appear. And that's telling us there's a problem with the road. There's a gap in the track or something's not connected properly. And so what you do is you go look around your track and you go, oh yeah, I've got this piece over here that's not lined up right. And you fix that and away you go. Now one, one other thing I want to point out, and this is why I put this little shorter section of track in over here. Let's see, not that one, but that one. So I'm going to delete this. And we're going to put in a different section of track here. And let's put in this branching junction. And so now that I've placed this, um, we have a branch off to the left there that right now is not connected to anything. And I want to point this out because if you use these branching pieces like this one or that one, uh, all of the pieces, all of the branches have to be closed. And so right now we've got that gap, and if we leave that, and we come over to our car, we're going to run into the same problem. So we'll hop in the car, drive onto the track. Oh, actually it worked. That surprises me. Sometimes that works, I guess. Most of the time when I've done this, it hasn't. So... But it's usually a good idea to go ahead and complete these sections because, uh, I don't know, I've never seen that actually work before. That was a surprise to me. And part of me is tempted to edit this out of the video and demo it properly, but... <laughs> uh, I don't want to hide that from you because it obviously worked. Let's see what happens now that I stuck a piece of track onto that, and that's not connected anywhere. No, it's still doing it, probably because we have a complete loop. That's pretty wild. Hmm. Well, alrighty then. 
Well, my plan though <laughs> is to go ahead and build that branch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But yeah, typically you want to complete all of these things. And that's because the, um, the game uses those racetrack piece connections. Uh, that, that tells the car, the game, where the AI cars need to go. And they also help the game keep track of where the player is supposed to go. And so um, if you have anything that's not connected, usually the game won't let you proceed. So that's why that surprises me. But uh, let's go ahead and come over to these uh, ramp pieces. I'm going to connect this one up like that. We'll use this flat piece. And then the arch on top. I'm kind of building a little bridge here. And I could use this bridge piece, but uh, the, the theme that I'm planning to use for this, that doesn't really make sense. And so I'm going to actually put a very long piece in here, and I'm going to build my own bridge uh, in my next video here. All right, so then we got that. I'm going to put in another curve like this. And then I'm going to put a couple of short pieces on here like that. And we've also got these interesting ramp curves that's about the same as that curve piece I just put down. But this one goes up and down a little bit, so... Uh, oh, there we go. Wasn't aligned properly. Okay. So we'll put that one in there. And then I'm going to put in a couple of more little sections here. And we're going to come over and take out part of this. So that piece, two little pieces, that long piece, this piece is going to come out. And uh, yeah, that piece got to come out too. And this is where we're going to reconnect our branch back in. Because normally, <laughs> as I said, if you don't do this, you don't connect that branch back in, you got a problem. Now in this time, I'm not going to use that middle section. I'm going to connect up two small sections. So that narrow section there, and then a narrow curve over here, which will connect up our branch like that. And then this will connect up over here. And we just need to close the loop. And I took that one out because that's going to be too long. That one is too short. So we'll need a couple of small pieces. There we are. So now we have a branch. And if I've measured this all out properly, it's about the same distance traveling that branch as it is going this way. So the player has a choice. It uh, doesn't really matter which way they go. There's more turns on this one, so that might be a little trickier. But uh, that's all right. And again, if we've got everything connected, or at least connected well enough, <laughs> uh, it should allow us to race it. And it will. So there we go. But uh, anyway, before I go ahead and do that, let me come back out, because I want to point out one more thing. And that is that now that we have this track, and you'll notice the racetrack start piece will allow us to go ahead and race this. Um, all of, it means that all of the pieces are connected properly. And again, that's important, um, because... If it's not connected properly, that wouldn't turn on. And what that's telling you is that this, the logic that's in this piece that governs the race isn't able to use the track because there would have been a gap. Now, even though I finished, didn't finish that branch, it, I guess it had enough to be able to use the, the main loop. It probably just wouldn't have used that branch. 
But um, the reason I'm repeating this is uh, there's another ramification of this, and that is that once you start the race, because it's going to allow us to drive onto this and race this, and once we start the race, you do not want to come in here and remove any of the track. So you cannot break the track during the race. Um, and you might be wondering, why would I do that? Well, you might want to, for example, use a replayer to put down some track pieces. So maybe you want to blow up a section of track or something like that. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> On my Wii U, I've actually crashed my game and even crashed my entire console when I've tried to do that, when I've tried to remove track along the way during a race. Um, the AI doesn't know what to do, doesn't know where to send the cars, where they can and can't go, and uh, it crashes the game. So you definitely do not want to do that. So those are the two main rules when you're building your racetrack. You want to make sure ahead of time all of the track is laid down and connected properly before you can begin the race. And then once you are racing, you cannot break the track. That's the cardinal rule. You cannot break the track. So I want to point that out because that's really key. But let's go ahead and hop on and give it a try. So we'll come over here and press Y to start the race. Oop, there it goes. <laughs> Overshot it, I guess. And we'll start the challenge. Hey, Francesco. And let's see how it races. Now I can choose which way I want to go. Meter went left. I'm going to go to the right. And as you're racing, you'll notice you can actually go off of the track a little bit. It will allow you to do that. Um, it gives you a little bit of a grace room. But for example, I can't just go anywhere I want. If I go too far off the track, it's going to return me to the track. And it actually set me back away, so it penalized me for doing that. And I used, uh, flicked up my right control stick in order to uh, go a little faster there. But now I can't do that because my... Uh, The meter in the bottom there wasn't full enough. Hey, I'm actually in first place. I thought meter was. I just looked up at the top and I'm actually in the lead. How did that happen? Meter, you're not doing so well there, buddy. Oh, it actually it didn't put me back. It set me ahead a lap. Well, that's kind of interesting. All right, so we'll go ahead and exit out of that. And it dropped me out of the car, too. Well, I think that's enough for today. Tomorrow I'll be back with a special follow-up video, and I'm going to change the sky and add some extra terrain pieces and place some buildings and plants to make this toy box into something scenic and fun to drive through. Because right now we can play it, but it's kind of plain looking. And uh, I'm actually going to turn this into a race, uh, scenic racetrack for you. We're going to be in here a few weeks uh, before my new series starts, and we're going to be in here when we get back from that series for a little bit. So might as well make this uh, scenic and fun toy box to be in so that you can enjoy it. So until tomorrow, I want to thank you for watching my video today, and I hope it was helpful to you. Toy box races are fun and easy to build, and they're a great way to get started in the toy box. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that, so you don't miss the next episode. To subscribe, just click my photo in the lower right corner. That's all for me today. See you again tomorrow for my special bonus episode.